for you. You're going to jump right into this list. Glory be to the Almighty God. Lord God, we thank you again on today, Lord God, for your and your mercy endures forever. Lord God, we stand before you right now, Lord God. We ask the Lord God that you will cast all of our sins, Lord God, all of those to the sin of our voice, Lord God. That you will cast all of their sins, Lord God, into the sea of forgiveness. That you remember those sins no more, Lord God. For this day forward, Lord God, they will be able to walk before you, Lord God, to be like perfect. Lord God, we also thank you for your mighty hand upon our children, Lord God, from one end of the earth, Lord God, over to the other. We also pray for all of the saints, all those that are and all those that will be. Lord God, we also send out a special request, Lord God, on today. That is just a few of us here, Lord God, but you said, Lord God, when there's two or three gathered, oh, yes, you Lord. will be in the midst. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, so we ask right now, Lord God, that we will put a mighty hand of wing covering, Lord God, yes, on the Lord. sick today. We ask all these things, Lord God, because we know that's only you can do. And we want to praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to the Almighty God. All right. Here we go. We're coming on down now to what? Revelations chapter 18. We ain't made it all the way through yet. This Bible is talking about you. You reading it about somebody else. You reading about Isaac. You reading about Abraham. You reading about Paul. John, Peter, Elisha, you read about all them folks, but you forget that you, we ain't got to the end yet, so this Bible is about who? It's about you. You are in this Bible. Where do we find you at? Or can you find yourself in the scriptures? I asked the question on my Facebook page. It said, the Lord is your shepherd, but are you his sheep? And if you his sheep, you should be able to find yourself somewhere in Scripture. It's talking about you now. That's what we at now. We're at the part where we're talking about you now. Right? Revelations chapter 18, verse 1. Anybody like to read? Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven. How many times John the said he saw an angel come down? How many times John the said I seen something that appeared as this or that? He said he saw what? Another angel. What did it look like? And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having what? Great power. And the earth was lighted with his glory. Many times, John has given you descriptions of things he has seen and if you get into it in the spiritual form the Lord could just keep appearing to John in different shapes and forms to represent certain things 
that's happening. And a lot of these visions has something to do with the what? The heavenly places. Things that are happening in the heavenly places. And they have earthly what? Examples. Right? 18 verse 2. Revelation chapter 18 verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen. Who is this Babylon the Great? Satan. We have heard talks of YouTube, internet, one after another. And a lot of them really not wrong. Why? Because if they call it the United States Babylon, if they call it Rome, Babylon, if you want to call whatever country you want to call Babylon, it just means that they are a part of Satan's system of things. That's why they keep putting countries in it. Because they are part of what? The seven heads. That's why they're seeing it that way. But I have to look at these things also, what? Spiritually. I have to look at them spiritually too. Right? Give me verse 2 again. Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Every unclean spirit you can think of has attached itself to Babylon. Right? Verse 3. Verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. How do I know this great Babylon ain't just a kingdom? How do I know this great Babylon ain't just one nation? For all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath and her fornication. The Lord said, All the nations on earth are participating with her. That's how I know that she ain't one country by herself. Huh? She ain't this country they saying. Greece, Rome, the Vatican, or the Pope, and all this kind of stuff. Huh? For all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath and of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. They have involved themselves in her what? Evil spirits. That's why you might hear sometimes they say the priest what? Sleeping with who? The children. All her spiritual fornication, abomination, and blasphemies against God. And the Lord said, he's going to do what with him? He's going to throw a whale in the lake of fire and burn her up. And that's what they're doing today, right? they mixing all up and doing everything that they can, and they making God mad. Because all, of, all peoples don't need it. I mean, a whole lot of peoples are gathering up together, and they just ain't doing what they supposed to do. They just right. getting together and doing this and doing that 
everybody coming from everywhere, ganging up, I mean, just, you know, getting together and stuff and just doing whatever they want to do. And God is tired of that. Right. He tired. It's long what suffering. It say it? He tired of it. Long suffering coming to what? The end of grace. Yeah, that's true. It's coming down to the end of grace. We just went over last week in chapter what? 16? About the wrath of God. Because the people would not what? They repent. They ain't listening. They ain't repenting. They ain't doing nothing but having fun. That's what he think it is, isn't it? Enjoying life to the fullest, they say. Yeah. Mm. That's what he think. If you enjoy life to the fullest, you better make sure and check yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you better check yourself and make sure it's in the right way with God before you make your step. But we're trying to make sure your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Huh? <laughs> well, once you get cast out at the end, once you get cast out at the end. A young lady told me today that um, she had plans. <laughs> I was like, as I said, come on to Bible class. Uh huh. She was like, I got plans. I was like, okay. Everybody <laughs> come to church. Down. You need to lay that down. Lay that down. The churches don't got empty now. I mean, they used to be full of people, mm -hmm. but now it don't got empty with people. People don't want to go. This one doing that. That one. That whatever they doing ain't got nothing to do with you. They don't want to hear from God. Them. That's right. They don't want to hear nothing. Nobody tell them. But they want to come to see what anybody else doing. You know, I mean, just look around and see what they doing. But you come to church to receive something. You know, you're going to get something out of the lesson. But they don't come for to get nothing like the lesson. They come in there to look, to see what they doing so they can say they ain't doing nothing. Go back and tell them they ain't doing nothing. How do you know we ain't doing nothing? You just become there and see one time. Yo, know, folks don't want you to talk about God no more. Well, deep, deep coming the only thing they said, John, if you want your church full, you need to have a seeking program. <laughs> I was just yeah, thinking that because I heard a guy yeah, say that today coming. that we got to get back in the church building so we can hear some songs. Right. Yeah, what about the word? Right. You don't want to hear the word of God. No, you don't want to hear the word, but do you come to the singing you so we can stand up program. and jump from one side to the other? That's how all the angels fail. That's how one third of the angels fail. <laughs> Music. Lost track of where they supposed to be at, what they was doing. They thought the music was on the level. Got yeah, happy. It ain't so much as the music. Um, minister still. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't so much as the music. It's really the the men's and the women's. When the men's and the women's get together, when the music started playing, they started looking at the men's. And the me is looking at them with the eyes coming around like this year and I said, there, look at y'all. Now they they gonna go outside and they're gonna talk after they gone the next day you know they together. Uh -huh. But then the next week they with somebody else and all those kind of stuff. That's the way that is. That's just like they think this church is more like a dance hall. Uh -huh. That is the church is not a dance hall. It's a place that clubhouse. Well, clubhouse, whatever it is, and it, it's the church is not a, what you call a clubhouse. The church is for us to receive a word from God. That every time we walk in there, it should be something that we don't get out of that lesson that we don't been taught that day. Now that's what God want us to do, to receive a word if it ain't but one. But they don't want to hear one. that word from God. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. They want to dance. They want to stand up and dance. They put them short dresses on and sit there for them legs. Don't care whether they showing something or not. And when they got the short dresses on, they sit right on the front poop, poop, poop. But they don't want you no word from God. Ma, where you been going to church at? At <laughs> my church. I be going to my church and I be going to him, go to them other churches. Everyone that I go to do the same, they do the same thing. Well, that was rhetorical, Ma. Not for well, you to answer. <laughs> it, it was the same thing. I ain't talking about no particular church, but all of them that I have been to, they, the people, not so much as the preacher or nothing like that, it's the people's there. Now the preacher preaching, and sometimes they preaching or they uh, praying or something, and while they praying, there's somebody doing something in that that they ain't got no business doing. It's church folks. And that's the truth. I was well. Let's go to verse 4. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Yeah. Come out of what? Out of her. her. Come out of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Move to another country. Mm. Mm. Leave Rome. Get out of Egypt. Is that what he's saying? What did he say? Read again. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Come out of the United States before we get to the seventh trump. Is that what he's saying? Come out of the buildings. <laughs> Come out of the buildings. The huh? building, the building that you in. Come out of that building because what you're doing is it something wrong with what you're doing. Come out of there. You know, come yeah. out of there because somebody's doing something wrong. Okay, read that again. <laughs> Revelation <laughs> chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Her is the world. To me. Her is the world. And who is the world? Satan is the Satan ruler of this devil. world. Uh -huh. So because he's the ruler of this world, he has turned this world into a plethora of evilness that's all around. And God is saying for us Christians not to be caught up with them. Not to be caught with who now? The sinners. Or oh, with the uh, the followers uh, of Satan. No, 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 no. Caught up with who? The followers of Satan. No. He's not telling you to come up with followers of Satan. Say that again. I said, who is he telling you to not be a partaker with? Satan. Okay. Not the world, not the people. He's saying, come out of her. Yeah, but he said, come out of her, my people. Come out of Satan. Don't be a pot taker of um, her sins. Yeah, that's right. You're gonna Don't punish sin. Satan. You're gonna throw Satan to the fire. That's right. The false prophets, and he don't want you to go with them because you've been a pot taker of their sins with them. Well, don't that include his followers too? Well, he ain't talking about them. He talking because they can come out of her. The but but like we just was talking last week about who came with Satan. Satan. The dragon, Lucifer, and whatever other names he may go by, he is influencing the people that are not following Christ. Okay, let me ask you this question then. Mm -hmm. If I say you need to receive a gift of her, who am I talking about? The Christians, people, or the Holy Ghost? A gift of her? Yeah. If I say you need to have a gift of her or okay. from her, who am I talking about? You need to have a gift from the Christians or you need to have a gift from the people that follow God okay. or you need to have a gift from the Holy Ghost? Okay, I got it. Okay, yeah. Okay, so we're going to get the gift from the Holy Spirit <laughs> so we can let it last. Yeah. That's right. And if you're coming out of her, 
You're coming out of Babylon. You're coming out of what? Satan's ways. Amen. You're coming out of Satan's ways. Right? And anybody that's involved in that in that group can come out of her mm -hmm. with their choice of receiving or choosing life and not death. Mm -hmm. If you don't come out of her, if you don't stop being a partaker of Satan's evil ways, you're going to receive her what? Plagues. Her plagues. You're going to receive the same thing, the wrath of God. We read it last time. Mm -hmm. We say he's going to pour out the wrath on her mm -hmm. and burn her. He was talking about Satan. Mm -hmm. Who he's going to cast into what? The, the lake, lake of fire. fire. He was specifically talking about Satan himself. Mm -hmm. He was just including the people that was following Satan or following the beast, or the system of the beast, he was trying to tell you don't be a partaker with Satan. Don't let him get you twisted. Mm -hmm. What Eve said? He beguiled me. Mm -hmm. What she mean? Yeah. She said he tricked her. What his right. words? He made things he look so good she couldn't stand it. He tricked her. That's right. That's where he so the people in the world you're talking about is being influenced by who? Satan. Yeah. The gift of God. Read it again. Verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Who my people? Israel? Who the people? Israel, Israel, come out of her. Who is he talking about? Mm -hmm. Israel or the church? Church. He talking about the church. It's my people. Who is his people? The church. A hundred and forty and four thousand and everybody that believes in Christ. A great number mm -hmm. that no one can number. Those are his people. And if you accept Christ, if you accept Christ, you are heirs to who? Abraham. You are heirs to Abraham's seed. You now are going to get the blessings of who? The children of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's why he put it all together. 144,000. And then after that, a number that no man can number. He put it all together for now. He didn't say 144,000 from each tribe and then move it to a lot of statements. Mm -hmm. He kept it together. Let you know there's what? Anybody that confessed with their mouth, believe in their heart that God raised Christ from the dead can be saved. Amen. It ain't just Israel now. They messed up their what? Their Amen. covenant with God. We couldn't keep it. Let me have some more. Verse 5. For her sins have... Oh, do you want me to go back to verse... Finish verse 4 again? No, we go forward. Verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Uh-huh. Verse 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Uh-huh. And devil unto her devil... According to her works. That's why folk running around there trying to destroy the United States. And we're going to set this place on fire. We're going to destroy this place. He ain't talking about that though. He ain't talking about sin. You can't destroy sin. Sin is spiritual. Mm -hmm. You fight against what? See? Lost them. See? Just lost them that fast. See? Mm -hmm. The minute they start talking and then talk to a preacher, they'll be like, who you fighting against? Mm -hmm. And when they, when they think about it and say principalities and high places, they're going to take that man off you in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to know how, how they got here to this place. Why am I here doing this against these people? Knowing that I'm fighting against principalities and high places. 
You just got to throw it on track. Talk to the preacher. They don't want that because now they're not going to be able to what? Continue to follow the crowd. I don't want to talk to you, John, because you want to turn me off. You're going to turn me off for what I want to do. You want to turn me off. I don't want to talk to you. Get away, John. You're about to say something against what I'm doing. I already know how you is. I'm trying to go up here. We're trying to get 10,000 folks so we can vote. We don't want to hear you talking. You better talk about throwing folks in the trash can. Because the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men. Mm -hmm. What part of this you'll understand? I don't care if three people vote. The two will vote for who God wants to be in the White House. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, they're going to kill them. They ain't going to make it there. They're going to get sick. It don't matter who you vote for. Mm -hmm. Next election, if God don't want you there, guess what? You're going up out of here. Plain and simple. They said, yeah, but can we find a man of God that can just, and counsel us on, on this state? Yeah, but he ain't got anything good to say. Mm -hmm. He ain't never got anything nice to say for her. That was my thought today. <laughs> that how can a Christian person encourage the body of Christ to vote? without encouraging them to vote either Democratic or Republican. Uh -huh. Because if you're encouraging them to vote, and one vote this way, Democratic, and one vote Republican, and then you still have division. Right. Because they're not in agreement. And anything divided can't what? Stand. So that was my thought today. Why are we encouraging people to vote? Or why are people encouraged, Christian people encouraging people to vote, saying their vote counts, when, like you just said, that God would set who he wants to have as president or whatever. And then you know? you can do that. Yeah, so why are we not encouraging people to, you know, trust God right. rather than trust the world system? I talked to a guy one day before. He was doing a little thing for uh, the Democrats. I said, yeah, but maybe, why y'all have never tried to get 100,000 people to pray? Hmm. Right. Why y'all never did that? Why y'all never tried to get 100,000 people together to pray to God? Why y'all ain't did that yet? Hmm. Why every year y'all come around trying to get us to vote for a man? Hmm. Why you don't never get together and say, let's get 100,000 people together and pray to God? Hmm. So he can change whatever we want for whatever desire we want. We'll just pray to God. He'll change. I don't care who in the White House. Mm -hmm. He'll make them do for me. Amen. Just like he did for Abraham. Mm -hmm. Not Abraham. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Just like he did to Abraham Lincoln. He's going to make him turn the ballot when you couldn't vote. <laughs> He's going to make him turn the ballot. And you didn't have a voting uh, process, mm -hmm. right? right? You couldn't even vote. And the Lord turned what? He turned the page for you. Mm -hmm. That's why people get mad. I said, look, if y'all want me to vote, I said, I will vote with y'all. <laughs> And I'll go out and I'll be out here every day. I'll quit my job and I'll be out here every day help y'all win. If you can show me where the children of Israel voted their way out of Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> if you can show me where the children of Israel went to Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, we have voted that we're going to leave Egypt. <laughs> If you can show me where they did that, I'll stand with y'all. If you can show me where they did that. I said, if you can't do that, I'll give you one more. When blacks was in slavery, if you can show me where they voted their way out of slavery, <laughs> I'll vote with y'all. Because it looks like every time I'm looking at it from Scripture, it looked like it was the hand of God to me. Amen. 
It looked like it was the mighty hand of God every time when there was no way out of no way. When you ain't got no way out of this. He said, when they were bagged up to the war mm -hmm. and nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. They said, they had no way out of us. Mm -hmm. No folks, they were bagged up to the war. Mm -hmm. The Lord made a way out of <laughs> no way. <laughs> Why we can't get these folks to turn to God? Mm -hmm. I don't get it. And I'm young in the ministry. I'm just starting. Why they don't get it, I don't know. It, it beats me. When there's no way out, Pastor Kaneen said, when there's no way out, mm. there's no way out of this. That just reminded me of the um, New Testament scripture I read today. A devil-minded minded man. Uh -huh. What is it? Can I go look it up real fast? Right. A devil minded man in James chapter 1, verse 8. A devil minded man is unstable in all his ways. In which ways? In all, all his ways. A L L. Because I, I listen to the radio and I listen to different people say different things. And one breath they're saying, trust the word of God. Uh -huh. And the next vo breath they're saying, go vote. Let's get together and do this. Yeah, like either you trust the word that you're going to go study or uh -huh. you just going to do your own thing. Plant church. Right. Hearers, hearers only mm -hmm. and not doers. That's what it be coming at. No walkers like they talkers. <laughs> I'm, I'm walking like a talk. <laughs> yeah, some of those people, Johnny, that out there, that some of those people out there, and they praise, you know, in the time of trouble. Uh -huh. But then when the trouble is gone, uh -huh. then they go back to whatever they were doing. Uh -huh. And just like they was on the TV today, all I'm gathered around. And the only time that they prayed was when this man came up and he said, well, we're going to say a prayer uh, before we do anything else. Because back. prayer changes things. Uh -huh. That was Al, uh, some, one of them um, black men that um, was in the, um, um, I don't forget what it was, but Al Trump, um, shopping or something. But he said before we do, they was talking about the boy they got, um, they got killed or the man shot him in the back, the police and stuff. And when he said that, he said, we're going to pray right. before we do anything else. Uh -huh. And because only God can, you know, get into the situation and make everything all right because of the boy that got um, shot mm -hmm. four, seven times right. in the back. I can't figure out why somebody would shoot somebody seven times, though. Yeah, well, I, I don't understand it either, but it's, it, they did it and shot him seven times. He's now paralyzed in the hospital, and they got him shamed to the bed. They now, now, how they going to chain the man to the bed if he can't even walk? He paralyzed. Uh -huh. He can't go nowhere. So why are they going to chain him to the bed? The heart of man shall wax cold. The heart of man shall wax what? Cold. cold. We're in the scriptures. So I know we in the scriptures, so we need to start praying ourselves. We need to do what now? More than what we do. We need to do Pray what? Pray more than what we do. Oh, okay. I'm just checking. You know I think we praying. also need to not be surprised. Right. The scripture. When, yeah, because we're studying this stuff. We are reading we the things that are happen. happening. Yeah. We already know what's going to happen. 
Out the way, they're going to start sending gifts that you did. Because you did it, when people find out you did it, they're going to send gifts one to another. Mm. When they find out you did I'm going to send somebody a gift. I'm glad she did it. Mm. Send me a gift then. Mm. Let's, let's celebrate. Why ain't you supposed to mourn over the day? No, send me a gift. Mm -hmm. Send me some. That was in chapter 15, right? Yeah. Revelation chapter 15. Uh-huh. They was going to start rejoicing. Rejoicing. Not sad over death. Mm -hmm. Rejoicing over death. I'm glad she did. Mm -hmm. Well, I hate for self. <laughs> I'm glad she did it. But you can't, you can't do that. You but know? that's what they're doing. Well, they doing this stuff, but I mean, that, that is kind of crazy. I, some people do do that. Well, we're in tribulation now. We're in tribulation and great tribulation. And the Lord just told you not to be a partaker of who sins? Satan. That's true. And then Paul said you need to go and do what? Examine who? Yourself. Because you screwed up. That's right. I know I was screwed up. And I had to be picked up by every day. Give me the next verse. So I won't make mistakes. Jesus. Well, you got no way of heaven. No. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 18, verse 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you. And double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she have filled, filled to her double. Verse 7. Okay, hold on. I want y'all to take them. I know I told y'all to take two thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to add to this while we're going through Revelation. The Lord is going to be talking, right? And I might try to point out something for y'all. Sometimes it will look like he's talking to the people on earth. Oh, it might look like the people on earth talking, but it might not be the people on earth talking. It's the people at what? At the throne in chapter 6, right? Mm -hmm. When they say, oh God, how long would it be for thou judge those on the earth, right? So you hear the scripture where they talking, and you might see other times where we talking, right? You might see time where God responded to the people and you can't figure out what's going on because he's not talking to the people on earth. He responded to them in heaven. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful with that. Just want to throw that in there. Keep going. Verse 7. How much she have glorified herself uh -huh. and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. Uh -huh. For she saith in her heart, I said a queen, uh -huh. and am no widow, mm -hmm. and shall see no sorrow. Right. Verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, mm -hmm. death, and mourning, mm -hmm. and famine. Right. And she shall be utterly burned with fire. Now, could we talk about both? Why don't keep these thoughts together now? Don't get up in here and then come back to a job. Dad, go talk about the king on the earth. I ain't talk about Satan. I just said they were together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it looked like he talking to one and talking to the other. And sometimes he talking about both at the same time with well, one statement. It's Holy Ghost time. Okay, can you can you break that down a little bit, Bo? What do you mean by Bo? Well, sometimes when he talking to to Satan or about Satan. He talking about Satan. Why he talking about you? If the Lord is referring to the Holy Ghost, he also will be referring to you with the Holy Ghost. He could be talking about the Holy Ghost and talking about you at the same time. Well, can you give us a scripture so we can know the difference? Yeah, when I get to one, I might break one down for y'all. Okay, so verse eight is is referring to read it. still read it. Revelations eighteen and eight. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, uh -huh. 
death and mourning and famine. Uh -huh. And she shall be utterly burned with fire. Uh -huh. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Who judges Satan? God. Okay. Who judges these nations? God. Talk about both of them. Talk about both of them right there. Who are we just talking about? Do it, say it again, Johnny. Say that verse again, Brother Gene. I ain't get it all. Revelation chapter 18, verse 8. Uh -huh. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, uh -huh. death and mourning uh -huh. and famine. Right. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, uh -huh. for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Uh -huh. There's two things in. What What's the both? Talking, you said we're talking about both of them right there. Both of them. Right here, seven heads. Seven head kingdom. The beast that rides her. The mm -hmm. kingdoms going to be destroyed that follow her. He's saying, come out of her. I, I got it. No. Come out of her so you don't receive her plagues. Mm -hmm. Come out of her. Right? Come out of who? Her. Say. Read verse 2, 18, 2. Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, uh -huh. and the hold of every foul spirit, uh -huh. and a cage of every unclean and hateful Keep bird. Keep going. Keep going. Verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath. That's enough. All nations have drunk of her wine. And it ain't red wine. Mm -hmm. It's fornication, blasphemy, sin, abomination, homosexuality, influence and fornication, mm -hmm. adultery, lying, stealing. Mm -hmm. And the Lord has what? Remember her. Mm -hmm. The Lord didn't forget about you, Satan. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Satan one time about nine years ago. I said, the Lord ain't after me. He after you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, he after me. He coming for me, but he after you. <laughs> Because he would try to tell me when I ain't had no money. And try to throw stuff in my head. I said, yeah, but the Lord ain't coming out for me. He's coming out for you. <laughs> John, why are you talking to Satan for? Who are you talking to Satan for? Why are you talking to him and listening to him and doing his evil things that he's telling you to do? Well, you're supposed to talk to him because Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. So he was talking if to you. If he Satan. ain't talking to you, then how you say I rebuke you, Satan? Right. If he ain't talking to you, then. What are you saying that for? If you say I rebuke you, Satan, that means he's talking to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. You in all kinds of uh, situations anyway, like when you talking to somebody like man here. He listening with you. Ready to get in. Trying to get in there. Ready to get in. Ready to see sure he, he gonna look at you to see what's bothering you. Oh, you. Mm -hmm. So he can get in there, get in there. Turn that thing up a hundred mile per hour on your table. Mm -hmm. That's what he trying to do. Uh, let me get my little input in here. You better, you better get the word of God in your mouth. You better get it quick. <laughs> you gonna eat your life. And you got to know what's right and what's wrong when these, these, these bosses and different stuff, you got to know which one is right and which one is wrong because sometimes it's confusing. And you got to know which right and which wrong. Because his job is to do his, what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Say no that he can't destroy you, so he got to get you out of order with and God. Because he know God will destroy you. God give you wisdom so you can understand. He need to get you Where out of all God. Where he at? 
by any means necessary, whatever it takes. Drop some on the floor, I don't care, whatever it takes. Whatever gets you upset, drop an egg in the floor. Break a glass or something. You scrub some dirt on the sheet. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, I was in line for you with my car. Did you see my car here? <laughs> you ain't got no chain with all my money. Huh? <laughs> I know that happened to me too. Yeah, I was right here. I, I said, well, you were right here. I moved on back. And then I went on. Anything. Anything. You know what nice as I can be? Anything to kill, steal, and destroy yeah, you. Destroy, to make you mad. Get you out of order with God. Yeah, That's man. what he's trying to do. Right, so you can come right on the hell with him. <laughs> because if you can be a pot take off his sins, you're going to be a pot take off his plagues. Yeah, right. Exactly right. right. What are we stopping at? Right here. Time's up. <laughs> what we stop that? Um, you need to say that again. Because that was a good saying. If you can be a partaker of Satan's sins, you gonna be a partaker of oh, Satan's place. Yeah. I'm posting that. Okay. Don't y'all be going back asking me what I said. I don't know what I said. I don't know what y'all do. Don't be asking me, I'm like, huh? Don't be asking me to say stuff again. Because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to walk with the Holy Ghost. Like, John, what you just say? I'm like, huh? Yeah. That was good. I don't remember. If you can be a partaker of Satan's sin, you will be a partaker of Satan's plagues. You do evil, evil gonna follow. You be hatred, hatred gonna follow. You want love, show love. You want mercy, give mercy. You want a blessing, be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Huh? You want something? Then give something. Just the principles of God. It's just called activating the principles of God. Because you got to go by what? His word. One time, guys said, John, is there anything uh, too heavy that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he said something that God is anything too heavy. That God made something too heavy that he couldn't move. And everybody kept saying this thing on the internet for about a year or two. <laughs> so I asked God, I said, God, is there something heavy that, can you make something too heavy that you can't move? Yeah. They said, God will do all things. I said, God, is something you can make too heavy that you can't move? I said, give me the answer, I can post it. <laughs> <laughs> And God said, yeah, there is something mm -hmm. that I can make mm -hmm. that's so that heavy I can't move. He that I can't move. move. That's right. I said, God, what's that? He shot me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what you can move? What you can make so heavy that you can't move? He said, my word. He just saying yesterday, <laughs> today, and forever. <laughs> he said, my word is so heavy that I can't move it. The word of God. Amen. It's the only thing he said he can't move. Because he keeps what? His, His promise. promise. It's the gift of God. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Almighty God. This is going to go through our lesson today. We even get through chapter 18, though. Know? We even get through half of the chapter. We even get through half the chapter. We're going to talk all night. No.